the University of Minnesota. And he has varied research interests, but today he's going to talk to us about polygography and uh, how we can use an education in K-12, higher education, and uh, it's really interesting stuff. So, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here at GSE. Uh, as Robert mentioned, I'm a computer science professor, so uh, although I started out in mathematics, uh, I have a master's degree in mathematics as well, and uh, really still today consider myself a mathematician slash computer scientist, maybe even artist, uh, thanks to polynomials, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I uh, discovered or I developed this uh, uh, topic this, uh, that I named polynomiography uh, many years ago, and uh, uh, because it is visual, uh, I it caught the attention of uh, different people, and I have given uh, really many talks on this subject to uh, uh, educators, to even uh, to high school students, high school teachers, middle school teachers uh, at national and international level. Uh, and I've been lucky to be to get invited to uh, these conferences. Uh, also at Rutgers, uh, uh, I have taught uh, uh, SAS honors courses on polynomiography, very seminar. This is a first year seminar, uh, but uh, I, I feel that it can go far more than that. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, if you haven't seen it, I will introduce you to some possibilities here. Uh, uh, Depending upon the audiences, I have uh, started my talks differently. And since this is a uh, education audience, uh, I would like to uh, start it with uh, an article that I accidentally ran into. Actually, my brother, who is a mathematician, I met him this summer. And he brought to my attention an article in the Harper magazine uh, and uh, uh, the article called Wrong Answer, The Case Against Algebra 2 by Mr. Baker in September issue of 2013. Uh, now this, uh, on the cover of the magazine, there is a, uh, this background, as a background, there is these questions, uh, four uh, uh, multiple choice questions. It really doesn't say, or answers, I should say. It doesn't say what the question is. Uh, and then there are pictures of, uh, or drawings of uh, students who are horrified by the scene and running away uh, uh, from the classroom. Uh, well, after all, when you look at these, uh, you, you know, they, they don't look very friendly. Uh, 18, 81, why? with a superscript of four, blah, blah, blah. What does that mean? Uh, but to us, uh, we probably can guess that the question is trying to ask, what is the correct uh, expansion of 3y minus 1 to the fourth? Um, Mr. Baker has a case against the use of algebra as a required course in high school, Algebra 2. And uh, he quotes some. Uh, anti-math comments from the web. And I give you a couple of examples. Algebra, weightlifting for my brain. Sorry, I have to delete the rest of that. Uh, <laughs> more like death of all happenings in the world. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I, I, my father, uh, uh, who was an officer, he promoted math, and when I asked him, what, what is math good for? He said it expands your brain. And uh, I just took it at that. And uh, I always liked math, but uh, maybe I did it because I was told you have to do it. Uh, so maybe I didn't really know that I liked it. Here is another one. I really, really hate algebra too. Wish I was dead. I want to kill myself. Uh, uh, if you can. So I would probably say, you should hold on to this person. 
maybe there is hope. Mr. Um, <laughs> Baker goes on to say the reason these kids are upset is that they are required to do something they can't do. They are forced repeatedly to stare at very square-rooted polynomial horseradish clumps of a mute symbology that irritate them, that stop them in their tracks, and they can't understand, that they can't understand. Sooner or later, many of them hit the wall. They fail the course and have to make, take it again, and then again. As a result, they feel angry, dumb, sometimes downright suicidal. Uh, well, I, I don't know if I personally felt suicidal about learning algebra when I was a kid, but uh, I must say, as a even computer science professor, uh, I do realize that mathematics or algebra <coughs> is not a likable subject, even to computer scientists who have to deal with a lot of more math. My question to you is, uh, or math educators is, can we make polynomials more meaningful, less aided, maybe even, God forbid, liked? I mean, after all, uh, if you ask a typical mathematician uh, or, or a teacher, what is a polynomial? What answer do you think he or she will give you? Or maybe the dictionary answer. A linear combination of integral powers of, of a variable. And what on earth does that mean? Uh, so let's look at this multiple choice question that I showed you earlier. What if we could complement those with images, with what I call polynomial graphs, that can be the one that correspond to these polynomials? So, uh, for instance, each of these four polynomials, they uh, correspond to an image. And what do you think would be the correct answer when you look at these images? Well, the one that looks more, more uh, distinct is, of course, the leftmost image. So maybe that's the correct answer, right, if you're just going to guess. Um, I did not go to uh, high school in this country, as you probably can tell from my accent. Uh, I've looked at uh, Common Core State Standards for Mathematics. Uh, it's a long PDF file. I searched for the word polynomial, and I saw it probably around 25 times. Quadratic, 20 times. Equation, 200 times. So at least I can say that the word polynomials are mentioned in high school curriculum, even though most of the time we only treat or usually students are exposed to quadratic equations and at best <laughs> Uh, maybe cubic equation. Uh, some of the topics that I've seen there uh, in the Common Core Standards are use complex numbers in polynomial identities and equations. Know the fundamental theorem of algebra. Show that it's true for quadratic polynomials. Arithmetic with polynomials and rational expressions. Understand the relationship between zeros and factors of polynomials. Use polynomial identities to solve problems. Grab polynomial functions identifying zeros, solve quadratic equations with real coefficients that have complex solutions, solve quadratic equations by inspection, represent complex numbers on the complex plane in rectangular and polar form, uh, including real and imaginary numbers, perform arithmetic operations with complex numbers. Uh, what can polynomiography be used for? Right? The software that I will uh, mention uh, and show you a little bit later. Uh, but it's a software that visualizes polynomial equations. And when, sometimes when I have shown it to educators, they have said, well, what can you use it for? And they expect an answer in five minutes or less. And I want to say that this is a medium, the software. And in the courses that I've taught at, say, SAS Honors, uh, I get surprised by the imagination and creativity of students. Because uh, I give them this medium, and I tell them, you have to do a project based on this. But I don't tell you what the project is. I just approve it. And they come up with fantastic ideas. 
ecology and polynomial group, nature and technology. This is their, their projects. Bridging the brain hemisphere through polynomiography. Simulating neuroscience through visualization with polynomial root. The transformation of juliosis in polynomial root. Making fun, math fun, potential use of polynomiography in special education. This was an education student I had several years ago, and she wrote a very interesting project. Uh, henna design. Polynomiography and dance. I had a student who was a dance major, and she took my course, let's say, yes, course on polynomiography. Now, I want to say, how can possibly one reach a dance major uh, and interest her with abstract polynomials? Uh, would be impossible if the visualization behind it doesn't exist. Polynomiography and symbology. Uh, I had an artist who said polynomiography inspired by art and art inspired by polynomiography, uh, and so on and so forth. So even the last one, God, Christ, and mathematics, exploring Genesis through polynomiography. This was a very imaginative uh, uh, project. Uh, calculating Bach by appreciating polynomiography, uh, linguistics, chemistry, uh, many, many topics. Uh, one might say, oh, these are, this is SAS honors after all. These honors students are motivated students. They are not typical students. You can't reach them. And I can, first of all, this is a link to uh, this uh, SAS honors presentations by the students. In fact, it's on the website of uh, uh, honors courses, the dean. Uh, Matsuda uh, helped me make a video of presentations, and it's there. So uh, now, uh, as I mentioned, one might say, well, polynomiography, this kind of a technology or software, can only appeal to, to uh, uh, highly motivated honors students and so on. I would say that is not true at all. Uh, for instance, in uh, Illinois, Western Illinois, where uh, my brother is a math professor, uh, some of the, uh, they have a program at the university for uh, six to eighth graders called uh, Girl Plus, Girls Plus Math. And uh, they, they've been doing this uh, every summer. And uh, they get exposed to different softwares, different subjects in mathematics, and one of those activities that the girls do is to work with the polynomiography software. And I get comments like, I, I give them, we give them a questionnaire. Uh, I've attended one of those uh, 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 sort of camps and gave a talk. Uh, but this was the most recent one. Did you like learning about polynomials through polynomiography software? Yes. 20 of them, sir, out of 20. Now, do you think that a typical 6th to 8th grader would say, I like polynomials? I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> and the, the answer to this question, it was fun because we got to make awesome designs and explore different things. Not only does the software make learning about polynomials easier to understand, but it makes it fun. Uh, it taught me about what the equations are. It was easier than doing it by hand. It was cool to see all the different patterns that can be made with polynomials. Uh, it's amazing, it's fun, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so very positive uh, answers. Uh, another question. Uh, since your introduction to polynomiography, are you more interested in learning about mathematics or polynomials? 19 say yes. Do you think polynomiography software could additionally motivate you to understand math in general? 16 of them say yes. Would you be interested in seeing your teacher use software uh, back home? 19 of them say yes. Uh, would you like to see a book on polynomiography? Uh, almost 50%. Maybe because nowadays we have, there is the internet, everything is so visual. So sometimes when I have been trying to get uh, you know, fundings to advanced this, uh, I have seen, uh, say, 
from supposedly an expert, they tell me, well, you know, uh, this, uh, how do you know, I mean, what can you teach? How are you sure that you can teach mathematics with this software? And I must say that's that kind of a, a question uh, would ignore the enthusiasm that you would see from the students themselves. It's like Facebook, you know, you don't you don't have to tell children or teenagers to like Facebooks. They don't need the approval of teachers. I feel that with polynomiography, students feel the same. They they like it, whether or not the teacher says that, that they should they, this is good. And if they have a teacher who is also interested in using it, they can really teach a lot of different subjects. Uh, would you be interested in having your personal copy of the software? 18 say yes. Uh, uh, would you introduce it or recommend it to a friend? I mean, they're, they're all very positive. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, Cheryl, who has a student at uh, GSC, has uh, been kind enough to use it in a high school, Lincoln High School, yes, Lincoln yes. Middle School. And she, too, had very positive experiences from the informal sort of questionnaires that was given to the students. So this has been tested, and, and students uh, like it. Now, how does the software work? So let me show you uh, a little bit about how. So I. Uh, you get a you get a canvas here. I have uh, compared polynomiography with uh, you know doing art. When you do art, you have to have a canvas. You have to have the equipment, paint, and so on. Here you have a canvas. Or if you are a photographer, you need, you take a camera. That's your medium, and then you need a subject. You take a picture of something, a person, a tree. And here, uh, whoops. the picture that we take is a uh, this uh, laptop. I have dropped it many times, so it crashes. And I guess I did that just now. Uh, what do you want to do? Well, it, it, I guess it's going to come back. Uh, so what I need to input uh, is not the software. It is, uh, it's the laptop. Uh, so you have to start all over again with your thing? Or? No. OK. Um, OK, well, maybe, maybe I can. OK, so uh, what we okay. what we input into the software uh, is a polynomial equation. Okay, so uh, the subject matter for this is a polynomial equation, and uh, uh, a polynomial equation uh, you have to you enter it in. Uh, I tell you what, maybe. Let's try this one again. Okay, let's try it.
Okay, so here, uh, <laughs> if I press, uh, press on that button, I see this image, which is momentarily generated. And you see in the right-hand side, there is this polynomial, z cubed minus 1. Uh, z cubed minus 1 is by default. Now we can change this uh, polynomial into, for instance, z squared uh, and we get this polynomial and the software generates the corresponding uh, image which is based on in this particular case iterations of Newton's method. Now you can open up another canvas and change this polynomial to anything you like, for instance, z to the 4 minus 1. Uh, or you have to do it right, I have z to the 4, I have 2. And the software momentarily generates this, and now you see that there are four colors. <coughs> In fact, uh, using the software, uh, you can easily uh, convince almost uh, students at any age the so-called <coughs> fundamental theorem of algebra that says a polynomial of degree 5 has 5 roots. Here the colors correspond to, to the roots. Each color represents a region, so-called basins of attraction, um, Basin of attraction of that particular root under the iterations here. So uh, to to a student, uh, high school, middle school, at the beginning, these uh, colors. Uh, what is important uh, is not is, is maybe the correspondence between the colors, and not just not how it is generated. And our, there is another alternative way of entering the polynomial which is through its roots. Here I give two points, and I want a polynomial whose roots are that. And what I am going to get is a polynomial of, of degree 2 here, you see. So uh, uh, you, let me do it again. You can enter, for instance, a, a triangle, anything you want shape of a heart, and the software turns it into, into, a, uh, into an image. So what a, this uh, process reverses what a polynomial is. In other words, you can look at the polynomial um, equation in terms of its roots rather than its coefficients. And this already uh, defines a new way of looking at polynomials. Uh, and the new way of playing with polynomials. So uh, uh, there is, in fact, another feature where you can enter, uh, sorry, you can enter uh, a number, let's say your phone number. And this software converts that number into a polynomial and then it generates an image for that polynomial. Now, when I introduce students, kids, to this feature, they immediately want to play with their, with this, turn their phone numbers or their, uh, uh, you know, a number that they like into an image. Or in fact, they can even write a sentence uh, like, uh, uh, how are you? And this will be converted into, into a polynomial equation which can then be visualized. Now using this kind of a trick, you can in fact teach uh, what, uh, uh, teach functions, teach about functions, about correspondences between, uh, you know, uh, I mean mapping, you can show mapping. So you can really show abstract topics there. And uh, one of the nice features of this 
is that what is in encoded into this is, in fact, many, many uh, equations, uh, many, many uh, different techniques for finding the roots, many algorithms. Newton's method is one of them. And using those, you can get create different uh, images of the polynomial, not just one image. Look at this, for instance, z cubed minus 1. I had already shown you an image of this. Uh, and now I'm generating many more, and I can color it and turn it into, uh, uh, you know, beautiful designs like this. If I put z to the 6 minus 1, what I'm going to get is a flower with six leaves. Again, the fundamental theorem of algebra becomes a, uh, uh, something that you can visually explain it to a student. What if I decide to multiply this polynomial times another polynomial? Let's say z to the 6, another z to the 6, but this time to the power of 2 to the 6. I want to make it a bigger circle. So the operation of multiplication becomes a tool of design in this, uh, in this uh, here. So uh, as you can see, you can play with this uh, quite a bit. And uh, now what I, what I want to do is go back to uh, Here I would like to show you what uh, some other students have, have done here. Uh, you give this uh, software to the right person or to, to an artist, she will do something different with it. For instance, this is from a summer student I had uh, who was an artist, and she created actual fine art from uh, inspired by these images. This is a work with a Japanese uh, uh, artist mathematician that I generated. Here is some of the uh, work that students have done at the honors course. Uh, you see Hannah design based on polynomiography. Linguistics and polynomiography. Uh, polynomiography and symbols, as I mentioned, some of the projects that they have. Here, a student took this 2D design from the software and used a, a Google Sketch, SketchUp to turn it into a 3D. Uh, say from this image, he went to this uh, polynomial playground piano, uh, which is really quite interesting and imaginative. From this into that. Uh, I had a student who uh, wrote a project about the connection between polynomiography and uh, you know, cryptography, polynomiography, and uh, trees, the concept of trees in, in uh, computer science, connecting it to patterns and architectures in the world, uh, even uh, uh, Broadway, uh, psychology, using it as, uh, instead of ink plot, the traditional ink plot test, using polynomiography to, uh, to do psychology. Uh, and this just goes on and on. Uh, here are the students, uh, 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 high school students who came to Rutgers, <coughs> governors of the Summer School of Engineering, students, as you see, young kids in Japan, in Korea, uh, 
playing with it, and at Rutgers again. And uh, the kind of designs that you can uh, you can come up with these are just uh, absolutely uh, endless. Uh, now what I'd like to do is uh, um, the remaining of the talk, uh, I, I like to uh, do a presentation that uh, I have done uh, OK, now uh, I consider it as a connection polynomiography between art, math, and algorithms. Uh, uh, and this makes algorithms also uh, significant in the sense that, that we think of, uh, we think of uh, images and we think of math. But how do those images come about? Well, they come about in the process of using uh, through algorithms. I made up this word as a combination of polynomial and the suffix graphic. Uh, I know it sounds complicated, but in fact, uh, kids can say it quite well. Uh, and uh, I usually quote this uh, from uh, this physicist uh, book uh, or, or a series, a uh, PBS uh, program on, on PBS. Uh, about time and origin of the universe, that everything came from nothing, from a dot. And uh, polynomiography, uh, the way I like to think of it, is a game of hide and seek with a bunch of dots on a painting canvas. So when we think of a polynomial and a polynomial <laughs> equation, I mean, if you think of it, uh, which one came first, chicken or egg? Polynomial equations, I believe they were the more natural way that polynomials came about. Solving square root of, trying to approximate square root of two. Uh, so if, if we hide the dots uh, and then try to search for them, and in doing so we paint. We hide the dots with a polynomial equation, which is an algebraic description of location of the of the points. We search for the dot <coughs> using mathematical algorithms. There are endless possibilities, endless images, and discoveries. It's a blend of art, math, and science. It's a vehicle to attract kids to math and science. It's a medium <coughs> for all of K-12 students and teachers for art, math, science, and fun, and games. Uh, as I mentioned, I compare this to photography, this medium, where we have a photographer, camera, and lenses, subject, and personal creativity. In polynomiography, we need uh, also some tools, the software. And we take capture images of polynomial equations. We use our personal creativity. And we generate an image, which I call it a polynomial graph. Questions and answers, do I have to be a mathematician to play the game? The answer is no but maybe you get to like math in the process. And is there an age limit playing this game? For instance, I was talking with Robert about some of the software which is used in math education these days, maybe Mathematica or uh, uh, GeoGebra or maybe Geometry Sketchpad. Some of these are designed for special ages, special classes. With polynomiography, I have I have uh, tested it on five-year-old kids, and they happen to like it. Let's play hide and seek. We take two points. We hide it with an equation, quadratic equation. And then we try to generate an image. Uh, it's not so maybe exciting, but we can get exciting images such as this. Uh, same, same equation, but a different image. What if we take three points? We can hide it with uh, 
x cubed minus 1 uh, if we have a coordinate system. And uh, this is an image from just three points. We can get many, many uh, images from the same equation, just like in photography. You can use different lenses, different uh, speed, aperture, and so on, and to get different effects. Uh, polynomial equation, uh, this is uh, the way we define them. Uh, we see it as a, a dictionary definition, a formal definition. And we have these examples. And uh, we know what a root is, this number that we plug it in, we get 0. Uh, here is an important concept that I try to convey when dealing with polynomials, uh, polynomial equations, is this duality between points and numbers. Uh, so uh, when you think of a, for instance, a quadratic equation in high school, uh, what do we tell the students? Well, we tell them that quadratic equation has either two roots or one root or no roots, if you don't want to talk about complex numbers. But whether or not the coefficients of the quadratic equation is real, uh, the roots, the solutions, could be complex numbers. So in reality, we do have to talk about the roots of a quadratic e equation being a, being a complex number. And a complex number is nothing but a point. So what I tell students a complex number is, is a point on the plane. They know how to find locate, uh, you know, places on a map, and I tell them this is, a, a point is a complex number, and conversely a complex number is a point. And what the complex numbers do, they turn in points into, into numbers, in the sense that you can take one location and multiply it by another location to get a third location. So you can tell your friend, meet me at the product of a location of the McDonald's, and Starbucks. That may be a movie theater. Uh, history of the complex numbers is several hundred years uh, old, of course. Uh, uh, but the operations are quite simple. We can teach the operations of complex numbers uh, in a very easy, easy fashion. Here is a bunch of points. Remember I said hide and seek? Here is a bunch of points. I can hide it with, the, with this equation. If I say, what are the solutions to this equation, I get these points. So there is this also another kind of a duality. Points go into a polynomial equation. This is a hiding of those points. <coughs> Fundamental theorem of algebra, one of the most celebrated theorems, uh, becomes a sort of a visual, beautiful property to see through polynomial. Uh, so a polynomial of degree 17 has 17 roots, maybe some multiplicity there. Many people, of course, have worked on the polynomials. And what, I, uh, what we tell students in maybe middle school or even <coughs> college, high school or college, is the, how to solve equations. Linear equations we can solve, no big deal. Quadratic equations. We get exposed to it uh, early on, and we never forget it. Uh, degree 3 and 4 are also closed formulas. But who remembers those formulas for cubic and 4 degree polynomial? They're too complicated. And we know that degree 5 and hi uh, higher, there is no general formula. Galois theory uh, has shown us that there is no formula. So really, using formulas is not always the way closed formulas to solve a polynomial equation. And the way we have to do it is uh, to approximate the roots is through methods, iterative methods. I am surprised when I look at the, this, uh, for instance, the core material for high school in, uh, and middle school, where there is a lot of stuff on quadratic equations the roots of the solutions to a quadratic equation, but not a single thing about fixed points of a quadratic equation. If you want to know what is the square root of, say, 
So you, we tell the students how you solve a quadratic equation, the formula. And then we give them x squared minus 2. So what do they get from the quadratic equation? Plus or minus the square root of 2. They don't even need to use the formula. But what is the square root of 2? Can they approximate it? And when do we teach them how to approximate this? Well, uh, you know, Babylonians knew how to approximate this through iterative methods, which happens to coincide with Newton's method. Now, I have found that through polynomiography, you can talk about the quadratic formula and the fixed points of a quadratic formula. And the fixed point iteration. The fixed point iteration leads to images. Uh, so here we look at this uh, polynomial that could look very dry. And if I say, is this a nice polynomial, what would you say? What would be the answer to that? No. Would you buy this from me? Absolutely not. But what if I, I try to sell you this on a poster? Maybe you would buy it. Newton's method is one possible way of generating a, a sequence of iterations that converge to, to a root. And uh, the way I look at Newton's method is somewhat artistic. Uh, Jasper Johns, who is a famous American artist, says, take an object, do something with it, and then do something else. You get art. In Newton's method, you take a point, you move it somewhere, and then somewhere else, and then somewhere else, and then you color, uh, uh, do the coloring based on that. It's like a feedback system. You take an input, becomes an output, you feed it back into the into this machine again. Uh, take a dot, tiny dot, move it somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else, and then you know decide to do something here. So here I'm kind of showing you some images that you can generate from a single polynomial. Uh, you can symmetry is one of those concepts that um, even middle schoolers or younger they immediately recognize when you show them some of these images. Uh, and here I'd like to show off with some quotes on polynomiography. Uh, Discover magazine. Lose your fear of math with computer graphics that displays the beauty and symmetry hidden within algebraic equations. Iris Peterson, uh, Science <coughs> News. Over the centuries, blah, blah, uh, OK, physicists. Uh, and uh, some teachers, even international folks, have, have been nice to comment. But these are the kind of things that I personally like more, where a 14-year-old says polynomiography. I love it, whereas she would probably never love a polynomial. Uh, and uh, here at Rutgers, we have these uh, Rutgers Day events, as you know. And I had it one year and uh, let people play with the software. Nine-year-old boy said, I didn't know Matt could make such a beautiful images. Who knows? Maybe she, he decides to become a, a, a mathematician or scientist. What is a polynomial equation, uh, and what is it good for? Well, what is 17% of the number? That's really solving a polynomial equation, linear equation. Uh, what is the square root of 2? What's the what is the, uh, uh, if I know the length of two sides of a right triangle, can I measure the length of the hypotenuse? This is approximation of square root. What is the square root of 2, and how do I compute it? What's the Riemann hypothesis? And what is, a, uh, what is an open problem? This is a million dollar problem, which is related to solving equation, but not a polynomial equation. Our first encounter with polynomials is with linear equations. And uh, well, I'll go faster here. Why is polynomial equations important, solving polynomial equations? The very idea of abstract thinking and using mathematical notations are largely due to the study of polynomial equations. Furthermore, solving polynomial equations has historically motivated the introduction of some fundamental concepts of mathematics. Uh, here's Victor Pan. Uh, here is, uh, after many years of working with uh, 
polynomials and polynomiography, I came up with a futuristic love story of my own. It won't be as famous as Romeo and Juliet, of course, but uh, I like to say it anyway. The setting is a street in a city in the world. Woman, excuse me, sir, is there any post office around here? Man, yes, mademoiselle. You'll find one at any of the roots of x cubed minus 1. So this is quite mathematically a valid answer. It gives address to three uh, post office uh, locations without referring to a McDonald or a big tree that she would have to look for. So you can mathematically answer this. Thank you, that's very romantic. Uh, Man, may I invite you to dinner at your favorite restaurant? The woman, after a pause. I cannot promise, but my favorite restaurant's location is a solution to this polynomial. <laughs> so she gives this polynomial polynomial equation to the man. But this is a polynomial of degree 17. By the fundamental theorem of algebra, there are 17 roots. Each root is a complex number, is a location. So this guy must find the roots, go to those locations, and maybe he will be lucky and she's there. The woman leaves. The man falls in love. Uh, he uses polynomiography to create an art piece from it. In the process, he discovers a unique shape in the solutions. And knowing the restaurant's location now, he desperately searches for her and eventually finds her sitting alone. He presents her the artwork. This is the artwork. And you see, there is a shape of a heart there. And what the woman had done was placed the polynomial not by the coefficients, but by the locations of the shape of a heart. So she was trying to say that uh, I'm interested. And she immediately <laughs> falls in love. And the reason why she does, because the guy was smart enough to solve the polynomial equation, not because he was a good looking guy or rich or anything. They decided to get married and have these many kids. <laughs> you see, in, uh, that's the connection between complex numbers and ordinary numbers. Now, what do we learn from this story? That solving polynomial equations could be romantic. <laughs> Polyno solutions of polynomial equations are like locations on a map. This is the morale of this story. I want to tell students that when you solve a polynomial equation, you get locations. You get numbers, but those numbers are locations. We can hide any bunch of bunch of locations behind a single polynomial equation. Polynomiography can turn any solution, scary looking or not, into a beautiful image. Solving polynomial equation could be and so on. So how do you select a nice polynomial? There are many ways, really infinitely many ways. You can select it by the coefficients or by the locations. For instance, as I showed you on the software, you can take an imaginary, I mean, as, let's say, I don't know, social security number, hypothetical. Turn it into a polynomial. There are many ways to turn it into polynomial. This is one way. 0, 3 becomes 3x, 7 becomes 7x squared, and so on. And therefore, that number is a, I can think of it as a polynomial. And I can assign many different images to that polynomial. So this could be a polynomial graph corresponding to that number. That could be your credit card number. And you can imagine maybe a futuristic ID card could be something like this. When you go to, uh, to, uh, to a restaurant or purchase something, you give this card, and the scanner will lead the location of the routes Convert it into a number. Uh, OK, this is uh, one of the images that I'm uh, sort of proud of on the cover of Computer Graphics uh, magazine. And that image is nothing but x squared minus 2, corresponds to x squared minus 2. So even a simple quadratic formula found its way to C graph uh, quarterly. Here uh, is my image on the uh, cover of uh, a book uh, by two mathematicians. This is my own book. I've written my own 
uh, book on, on this. It's, it's actually more like a graduate book, uh, polynomial root finding and polynomial routine. But it does have chapters that could appeal to teachers uh, or maybe students. The, uh, uh, here is uh, in physics war in a Spanish magazine. This was my image on the cover of the uh, science magazine of Finland. Uh, even our New Jersey Savvy Living magazine, magazine used one of my images. Uh, now this is an image on the cover of uh, Rutgers. And as I mentioned, I have given talks in middle schools, high schools, different states. Uh, but what are kids saying is, as I mentioned, I've already mentioned that kids like it. Uh, and so the teachers. You know, uh, I've had experiences with teachers, and they always like it. Uh, but some of them claim that you know they have to find a way to introduce it to their students. Uh, and I, th I, uh, I honestly cannot understand why such a subject software such a technology cannot be introduced through K-12 education because, let's say, there are other things that needs to be taught. Uh, in art, you can generate some serious looking art. This is one of my favorite pairs. I call it life and death from the same polynomial. <laughs> uh, And some of these images, if you notice, are fractal. Some of you may know what fractals are. Uh, some of you may have seen fractals in images. Uh, but uh, polynomiography is also a tool that can teach about modern topics, such as fractal. Uh, I have taught courses even at, say, SAS Honors, as I mentioned. Uh, and when I ask the students, do you know what fractals are? Many of, some of them say they have seen it. And then I ask them, what is it? What is it, fractal? Well, they say it's like a cauliflower. Uh, so, oh, so you can eat it. So they don't really know very much about fractals. They just, that is self maybe repeating. Polynomiography can be a way to understand what fractals are. But many of these images, as you see, are not fractal. And that's one of the reasons I coined this term, polynomiography. Uh, here is a. Uh, exhibition of uh, artwork, if you may call it as such, uh, by high school students at Montgomery High School in New Jersey, where they use the software every every year. They use it for their seniors. Uh, in design, this is a carpet, actual hand woven carpet, and inspired by this, I came up with this design based on polynomials. And I thought it would be worth turning it into an actual <coughs> carpet. So a carpet, a uh, hand-woven carpet, inspired by a design uh, of a hand-woven carpet. This is another design uh, based on the same polynomial, which I also turned it into a carpet. So it can, uh, you know, you can do artists. This is one of my favorite art pieces. Uh, personally, I like this. Uh, because I made this, everybody knows how to make, uh, draw the US flag. But here, I did everything with polynomiography. There was no, uh, no cheating, no, uh, only polynomiography. And I could not give a single polynomial that would generate a flag. So it had to evolve. And it's uh, uh, as if the whole flag is evolving. Uh, you can connect. Some famous artists work, such as clay, to polynomiography images. I don't want to sell myself as, a, uh, as an artist, but uh, I want to say that there is resemblance between images that you, you see or you know as art, abstract art, uh, and polynomiography. Uh, you can image, generate uh, from a single polynomial numerous images. You can even turn them into 3D 
visual sculpture. Uh, so I like to, I'm um, getting to my last uh, slides. I like to say to whom can polynomiography appeal? Can it appeal to kids? Can it appeal to Hollywood, maybe? Can it lead to games? Uh, and the answer to those, all those is yes and more. It can be used for uh, teaching math, making polynomials fun, uh, and uh, make, turning them into an object that something completely different that we are used to. Uh, I must say that I myself have, have uh, uh, discovered uh, properties of polynomials, mathematical properties, because of my interest in polynomials. Do you know this character? Who is it? No. It's Ziti. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, is population of, uh, po popularization of polynomiography possible? Uh, I think it is. I think it can be introduced in K-12 education as a medium for teaching mathematics, as I've said, uh, and for making it fun. But to do so, I would need collaboration with uh, educators. Uh, and uh, I would like to, uh, well, I have some connections with educators. Professor Carolyn Meyer, actually, she gave a talk at the conference I had a few years ago. Uh, and. Uh, Cheryl Van Ness has used it as a, uh, a teaching middle school students. But it can be used far more uh, extensively than that. It uh, can be introduced maybe in some of our math classes here at Rutgers uh, or uh, high schools in New Jersey and more. And I must say that I'm in contact with some teachers and hopefully that eventually this will be developed. I guess I've reached the limit, and so I, I stop, and thank you very much for your patience. We have time for a couple questions. Thank you.